Welcome to Kerr 9000's Horror House. I was always a massive Wes Craven fan. I loved the original Nightmare on Elm Street, as well as The Last House on the Left, The Hills of Eyes. In fact, I will go so far as to say, the man was one of the true masters of horror. When the original Scream first came out, it was in my humble opinion a great movie, because it took Wes Craven's brain for horror, but added in what at the time was modern technology and fresh ideas. Craven directed all four of the Scream films up to this point, but with his passing the question was who would be at the helm for the fifth film and would they be able to live up to the high standards set by a master of horror like Craven? I am very happy to say that this fifth film in the Scream franchise went way beyond my personal expectations. I was really worried that without Wes Craven's influence it would be a misstep and just become a hollow cash grab, hollowed out corpse lacking all its former glory, but that is not the case at all. This new film finds the franchise returning to its former glory. The film kept twisting and turning and keeping me guessing with what I would describe as a smart script that pays just enough tribute to the original 1996 movie while also managing to present new and unique ideas of its own. The original screen felt like a love letter to slasher movies, part slasher film, part parody, but also very aware that while it was pointing out cliches, it was also committing to a few itself. This Scream movie does to the semi-sequel, semi-reboot crop of current horror movies exactly what Scream did to slashers. It discusses these new requels, as it refers to them. It lays out the tricks they pull, the rules they follow, it critiques them, sometimes pokes fun at them, but ultimately sets out to also try and be the best darn example of this genre that it can be. The film has a great cast, which not only includes plenty of characters from the earlier films, but also plenty of new and talented actors. It's great to see so many of the classic characters and where they are in their life, how the events of previous movies have affected them, but the film doesn't linger on them too long either. It helps set up the new characters equally well. If you're anything like me, you will soon find yourself not only deciding who you care about and who you want to see survive, you'll pick your favourite, sure, but you'll also start making guesses about who to trust and who not to. There are lots of bits of this film that I'd like to talk about, things that I personally think are really cool or are neat little touches, but I think this film works better if you go into it fresh and discover these for yourself. So I'd rather keep this review spoiler free and instead talk about the general spirit and feel of the film, instead of running it down scene by scene. I think it's the ideal film to discuss and ruminate on with friends though, particularly if you've all seen the earlier films in the series, so grab a pizza, grab a buddy or two and give it a go. The film's bloody at times, it's funny, it's tension-filled, and, in my opinion, has a fantastic payoff. Without giving too much away, this film has a surprisingly intelligent connection to the original. Overall, I'd give this film 9 out of 10 and call it a must-see modern horror. It's a fantastic tribute to Wes Craven. The directors, Matt Bettinelli, Ulpin, and Tyler Gillette, should be incredibly proud, and I hope I've said their names right there. So, with that said, it's Kerr9000 signing out saying, keep watching those scary movies, boys and ghouls. Hi, and thanks for checking out my video and making it to the end. If you'd like to subscribe, there's a little thing down there. Yep, yep, there. And you should also see some links to some other videos on the screen now. I make reviews of horror films, video games, sci-fi films, and all sorts of stuff. Or you can catch me on JRcade. Okay, take care. Have a great day. Bye.